Thanks for checking out this movie review. Um, so this is for a movie that's not available on like Netflix or Shudder or something like that. Because those are usually the movies I'm going to be reviewing. This one's actually an independent film. Very, very small. Very, very independent. The person's actually self-distributing at this point. And the movie is The Fear Footage. Let me show you that. Blu-ray. Um, shout out to Vita Sparzak for hooking me up with this copy. Uh, she lent this to me. I believe it's her nephew who made this film. So I was resolved when I watched it. I was actually not thinking about doing a review on it. And then I was just like, you know what? I feel like it's, it's, more, it's fair if I do an actual review on it. So I went into it thinking like, you know, people say all the time, like, I'm going to make this movie or I made this movie or whatever. And then you end up seeing it and you're like, okay, um, that's okay. That's a movie. You did it. But honestly, this movie is way more than that. And I was very surprised because like I said, I go into it with the thought of, I've talked to a lot of people in my life who are like, oh, I'm working on this script and they never complete the script or I'm working on this movie and they never complete the movie. So the biggest thing is actually completing it first. Then it is, was it very original? Was it good? How'd you execute it? You know, all this type of stuff. So um, I'm always very much like when I hear these things, I'm like, okay, it's more like a show me and then I'll, I'll believe it type thing. And so in this instance, this individual went and made the film and actually, I'm sorry, I should do a shout out for who actually made the film. Oh, it's not on the Blu-ray. Huh. Okay. They should say it on there. You should say it, man. I'll end up, I'll look it up while I'm talking here on a internet movie database. But anyway, uh, if, if you have interest in this film at all, you can just go to thefearfootage.com and you can purchase it direct from the filmmaker himself. It is right there. Um, it's 20 bucks. I, that's before shipping and handling and all that. So I'm assuming it's probably only like, you know, no more than 25 with shipping and handling and all that. So honestly, this is something where, you know, you have 20 some bucks lying around, I'm sure. Support independent small time filmmakers. I think it's well worth it. Which, on that topic of doing that, this shirt, Isle of the Damned, uh, is from a Baltimore, like, local-ish uh, filmmaker. It's di done by Dire Wit Films. Uh, Mark Colgrove did it. Really nice guy. And it's a fun cannibal film. People also, I think you can go to Dire Wit, their, um, their website, and they sell direct, I, I believe. So, sorry about this as I'm looking this up. But uh, yeah, so this movie was released, well, theatric, kind of like theatrically released in 2018. It was more just like a few small showings for, you know, family and all that. So the writer-director, his name is Ricky Umberger. Ricky Umberger. Ricky, you should have put your name just on the back of the Blu-ray, man. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to kind of talk off the top of my head of what I saw in this film. So it's done in the style, oh, and no spoilers, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone. So it's done in the style of like a, um, like a found footage type film, which the title, the fear footage would make you think that so that it's pretty accurate. So it's kind of in the vein of like a Blair Witch Project or um, Paranormal Activity or uh, like those VHS movies that, that they have, I think three or four of those actually at this point, I think three. Um, so it's done in that style. And the whole idea is there's a police officer who's, uh, responding to a call and then his, his, uh, body camera footage is found the next day. And that's like all I'll really tell you about the storyline. Uh, cause you know, experience it yourself. But, uh, for that reason, from what I've heard from my friend Vidish, that it was shot all on it, on a phone, on a camera phone, which watching it I wouldn't really think that although then I think a little bit further and I'm like I don't know cameras on phones have gotten pretty good so but it's not just about like shooting it on the camera that's kind of impressive it's it's what do you do with that afterwards and I think all the um, CGI effects that were put on afterwards were, were pretty good they were done well the sound design was pretty good there were good sound effects thrown in there at the appropriate times they're actually you know when you see something that's very low budget like this and you know that going into it you're like it's probably not going to have any like real scary moments or anything like that but legitimately there are moments where people can really jump 
I don't really jump much at, at anything, to be honest, because I've watched so much horror in my life. But um, there are things that I saw, and I was just like, oh, okay, that could, like, legitimately scare someone. Like, people could jump in their seat in the theater, at their house, whatever. The other thing is the um, scary parts, like the creatures slash whatever. I'm not going to define them because I don't want to spoil that. But those things looked good. But they looked... I, I noticed that it was kind of like, I wouldn't say a trick of filmmaking, but it was appropriately done. It was very smart the way that stuff was executed. Because it, it, it would be a situation where you see it, it pops up, and it's you see it just long enough that you, you your eyes can fix on it and you understand what it is and you can see what it is and you can see enough detail that it's like gruesome or scary or whatever, but it's not too much time where you can really focus and pick apart any sort of like the makeup aspect of it or the effects of it or, or like the mold of how it's actually made, stuff like that. So it's just enough to get exactly what you need out of it without people being able to see that looks cheap. So it doesn't look cheap, which it easily could have. So the timing is great on that. And that was one of the things that impressed me the most about this. I will say that the story isn't crazy original but at the same time it's kind of an issue where and i know a lot of people have kind of said this in the film realm which is they're they're really getting to a point where there isn't that much original content anymore because people are always in, influenced by other films and there have just been so many films at this point that it's hard to not be heavily influenced by this or that so, like I was saying, you know, it kind of reminds me of like a Paranormal Activity or a Blair Witch Project or those VHS movies. Very similar to those things. But the question is really, is it a good time? Is it worth watching? I would really say it is worth watching, especially for something that's very low budget, very independent. Especially if you're a person, and you should be like this, who wants to support low budget independent stuff. Because those are your filmmakers of the future. And if you're not supporting that stuff... There's not going to be much of anyone to feed into the industry and, you know, give it f some fresh blood. Because honestly, the film industry is so incestuous. They only want to work with who they've already been working with. So if you can kind of help someone along and, and get the, their popularity up enough that they'll get a, you know, legitimate look from the industry, that's a good thing. As soon as you can move people in inside to the inside of it from the outside that's always good. It's always good. It's going to lead to innovation. It's going to lead to new ideas, stuff like that. So, um, you know, just my rant for supporting small independent film, but, uh, yeah. So yeah, the story isn't like crazy original, like I was saying, but it's executed well, it's executed quite well, uh, way more than I was expecting to be honest. I was watching it and I was just like, huh? Okay. Okay. And when I got done with the film, I told my wife, who refused to watch it just because she didn't really like horror at all, so she won't watch horror films. I was just like, I gotta be honest, I was pretty impressed with this film. I really was pretty impressed with this film. So, um, very good achievement. Now, I will say about the acting, another thing is, a lot of acting is pretty, you know, relatively iffy, but that also comes from, you know, the I, I don't even know if there was casting, like casting really for it, because when you're doing like super low budget independent film, which I have done some in my lifetime, a lot of times you're getting friends and family because you don't have to pay them. If you have a little bit of money to throw around, like you might be able to do a little bit of a casting call, but you're not going to get top notch talent because you're not paying a lot of, um, most of the time. So <clears throat> honestly, for what the film is, for the level of budget and everything, it's fine. You know, like it, the, the performances are good enough. Although there were a few performances in it that I was pretty impressed with, to be honest. I was like, at this level, this performance is, is good, like quite good. So there, there's a few, of, you know, it's a mix. There are some that are just like, eh, and there's some that are like, oh, okay, that's a, that's a good performance. Um, so like I said, like the stories aren't crazy original and it's a few stories kind of thrown in there. Uh, but they're executed extremely well, they're done well, they're paced very well. And here's the thing, like even when it's super slow and that's intentional, it's because the tension is there. It's because tension is building, it's because tension is being maintained for a reason. And when the payoff happens, you're like, 
oh yeah like i i never when i was watching it i never really felt like okay let's get going let's go um yeah and and that always impresses me because pacing i feel like is something that's hard to get right with a film especially with kind of like a film like this that's kind of found footage but well on the other hand i think it is if people know that that's kind of the subgenre going into it that they they might be a little more forgiving because they know it's going to take a little more time because it's a little more like someone filming in real life and you're not going to have like action all the time or like interesting stuff all the time it's just the way it is so um but the directing was really good with this film the cinematography was really nice the 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 way everything got framed and how how the shots kind of traveled around worked really well i was very impressed with that it was very nice and uh yeah just overall um pretty dang good um i'm a fan i like it ricky umberger dude let me know if you're doing anything else in the future because i'll check that out i'll review it no no problem no charge or anything i don't make money on any of this so that's just how i do it but uh you know what that's like i'm sure you're not making a ton of money or anything like that's what independent film is unfortunately so that said people go to thefearfootage.com and purchase a copy of the blu-ray if you have interest in what i was just talking about like i said it's always good to support independent and literally this guy is unbelievably independent because he's selling it himself from what i heard he actually had a few offers for companies to pick it up and distribute it and he was like no i kind of want to do this myself which i totally respect because that's that's very um it's very ballsy honestly to do it that way because it's much easier to hand your project off and be like here now you can handle it you deal with marketing you deal with sales and all that stuff to do it yourself that's a lot of work it's a lot of work and i'm assuming a lot of it came from this was kind of like his baby like I mean, you get really attached to these things. I know all about that. And so you want to make sure that it gets treated the way you want it to be treated. So really cool to see that he's actually self-distributing. And I hope it goes really well. And here's my small amount of contribution. If hopefully a decent amount of people see this and they'll check it out. But anyway, um, do we do star rating on this? I usually do star ratings on my movies. So out of five stars with halves in, at play for being a low a low budget film, I can't go crazy on it. I'm gonna give it a three and a half star, and that's actually kind of stacking it, you know, knowing what it is, but also stacking it up against like established films. I'm going three and a half, and that's good. So yeah, that's uh, that's my feelings on it. Ricky Umberger, good job. Vita Sparzak, shout out. Thank you for hooking me up with this. I quite enjoyed it. And thanks everyone for checking out this video. Until next time, keep it brutal.